and Jewish close to pure ape. You will not understand what happened with Hitler in World War II and 13 million people being executed, not just the ones at the camp, but in the, in the whole war. 13 million people lost their life because of this uh, evolution theory. When the Olympics were held in Berlin, Germany, 1936, Jesse Owens won the most gold medals and Hitler refused to shake his hand. Hitler walked out of the stadium because he thought he was an inferior animal. Uh, we could talk a long time about that, but I don't think it's possible to understand what happened uh, how, to history without tying in this evolution theory. It is not just a dumb idea, it's a dangerous religion, and we cover that quite a bit in our videotape number five. A couple more things you mentioned in my one minute I have left here. Get all my notes here. Oh, you mentioned there's a flat earth society. What, why on earth would you bring up such a dumb idea as that? I'm not a member of a flat earth society. The Bible says very clearly the earth is round. What you're doing here is trying to, it's another fallacy in logical argument. I have to get my list of all the 80 different possible fallacies you can do in arguing, but that was another one of them. Guilt by association is what it boils down to. The Bible says very clearly in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, that the Lord sits on the circle of the earth. Okay, so for you to say the uh, earth is uh, flat, <laughs> it's ridiculous, okay? The Hebrew word used there is sphere. As far as germ therapy theory, I think there's overwhelming evidence uh, that uh, germs are involved in, the, in disease, but it is called disease, the germ theory because, surprisingly, there, there's still a, quite a bit of argument about it. Okay? People, a disease, a germ can be infested in a room, and some people will get it, some people won't. For instance, if you are taking oregano oil or garlic tablets, anthrax won't, doesn't seem to affect you. So does the anthrax cause the disease, or does the lack of resistance cause the disease? Does oxygen cause rust, or does exposed metal? cause rust. I mean, all you have to do is paint the metal and it won't rust. So I, I would agree there's a germ theory and a cell theory and all this stuff, but for you to try to associate evolution with it is a, is a logical fallacy. And there is no evidence for evolution. I would like you to share with the audience what is the best known evidence for any animal changing to a different kind of animal. What's the best evidence? Just give me the best one, okay? Save us a lot of time. I contend there is none, and I would quickly point out again that no fossil evidence could possibly count because you can't prove it had any kids. So that wouldn't work as evidence for evolution. Please tell us your best evidence for evolution. Thank you. What did you say? A kind? Yeah. The Bible says those that originally were able to bring forth, obviously the bringing forth it determines whether it's a kind or not. Now, there may be very variations now, 6,000 years later, where they can no longer bring forth because of, you know, Great Dane and Chihuahua have a few mechanical problems, but they could still actually bring forth, uh, technically. So I'm not sure exactly where the original created kind was, where the boundaries are. And if I were asking the taxpayers to pay for my religion to be taught, the burden of proof would be on me to demonstrate where this is. I'm not asking the taxpayers to do that. You're asking the taxpayers to pay for your religion to be taught. So the burden of proof is on you today, not me. There was a, uh, thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was down at uh, Heritage Baptist this is Heritage Baptist, sorry, at uh, Central Baptist College in, in our fair city of Conway, who, um, and I was looking through uh, the uh, Creation Research Society quarterly and uh, came upon a, a 1997 article by uh, Garcia Pozuela Ramos. Um, I might have gotten the name a little bit wrong, but it's, it's something close to that. And it's 1997 uh, in which he tried to uh, apply definitions of exactly what kinds were and were not uh, specifically to the primates, reviewing various lines of evidence for what created kinds uh, are and how we can define them uh, for um, monkeys and apes. And he mentioned something, and this is there in the library, that he did not do this experiment, and I honestly don't know who did or whose idea it was, but someone tried fertilizing uh, the egg cell of a gibbon, uh, that's a um, so-called lesser ape, uh, with uh, human sperm, and uh, they were actually able to get the sperm to penetrate and initiate the beginning stages of uh, fertilization. I don't know if the experiment got any farther than that. Uh, frequently, the uh, criterion that is used for defining a kind is interbreeding, and I remember a very entertaining uh, presentation that uh, Dr. Hovind gave last year in which he pointed out that you can interbreed a horse with a donkey, you get a mule, you interbreed a zebra with a donkey, and you get a zonkey, and a zebra with a horse, and you get a zorse, and, um, and so on. Uh, but this, this, you know, the idea that you can at least start the fertilization process between human and gibbon sort of worries me a bit. How would, how would you respond to that? 
You know, I, I, I don't want to, you know. No, it's fine. Uh, I, I, I prefer much prefer a dialogue rather than, you know, 10 minutes of each. Uh, I don't think you'll find uh, many humans volunteering for this experiment. <laughs> and probably very few givens, too. Okay. So it, I would quickly point out this doesn't happen in nature, okay? Secondly, it did not produce a fertile offspring. If there mm -hmm. are similarities in DNA enough to initiate the process, that still means mm -hmm. nothing, okay? Sometimes my computer will try to load a program and then fail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it did, it's but, not a success. Mm -hmm. But horses and donkeys do not produce fertile offspring uh, Well, yes, either. Uh, one out of 20,000 mules is fertile. Oh, oh yeah. all right. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. Hmm. But see, the fact that a horse, a horse and, a, and a jackass and a zebra are probably different, they're certainly different species, mm -hmm. but they're obviously the same kind. I mean, any five-year-old will tell you, they stand back and look, they're the same kind of animal. This is not the same kind as a, as a turtle, for instance, okay? Um, so, um, yeah, the, the, I'm not sure exactly where the kind is, which is what I told you. And if, if, the, if I were asking um, the taxpayers to pay for my religion to be taught, the burden of proof would be on me to demonstrate this. But I'm not. All right. Well, on your, um, I confess to still a little bit of, uh, 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 to still a little bit of, um, of confusion here. Um, let me let me see if I can if uh, if I can straighten this out. Um, you mentioned that horses and donkeys perhaps should be considered the same kind because one in twenty thousand mules is uh, is fertile. Uh, since we haven't actually tested, as far as I know, I hope we haven't uh, twenty thousand uh, attempts at cross fertilizing humans and apes. Uh, that's quite obvious to anyone that studies the the number of chromosomes of different animals, which I cover in my seminar. You know. Uh, the chromosome number is, is vastly different, and certainly the length of the chromosome, there are all kinds of things to cause it uh, problems. It, it's actually tough enough for human couples. Uh, very frequently, they cannot produce a child because it just takes one little minor problem, and there's a large percentage. I don't, doctor, maybe you know the percentage of human couples that are infertile that would love to have babies that cannot. I mean, um, well, there, um, I, I actually looked this up, um, looked at uh, chromosome numbers for horses and uh, donkeys. And uh, if memory serves, horses have 64 and donkeys 62. I could have that backwards, but they only differ by, um, uh, by two chromosomes, and yet they are part of one kind because, um, you know, for the reasons that uh, you've just uh, outlined so clearly. Uh, the problem is that humans have 46 and apes have 48, and the difference is, again, only, uh, only of uh, two chromosomes. Um, so in one case, you have a difference but it's not enough to put uh, horses and donkeys in different kinds. In another case, you have a genetic difference, but it is enough to put humans and apes in, in two different kinds. And I'm not quite sure. I, I, I'm, I'm looking for you know, some sort of logical consistency I can take back to uh, uh, tell my students, because they, they ask questions like this. They're sure, a no, smart that's, group. That's, that's a fair question. They're yeah. the you know, finest university students in the state, whatever the, those people up in Fayette, whatever it is uh, they say about the matter. UCA rocks. Uh, the number of number of chromosomes is an interesting study. It is indeed true that chimps have 48, humans have 46. Tobacco also has 48. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> oh. Um, amoebas have 50, and they say we came from amoeba, yet they've got more chromosomes than we do. Um, Chickens and dogs both have 78. They're identical twins. Um, the fern has the most chromosomes. That's the ultimate goal of all evolution, to become a fern. So um, I think common sense would tell you, if you look through the, uh, you know, the possum, the redwood tree, and the kidney bean, all have 22 chromosomes. Um, the similarities, I think, are evidence of a common designer. Now, if you want to believe that humans and apes have a common ancestor, you're certainly welcome to believe that. Thank you. But that is not something that you should be using taxpayers' dollars to. Mm -hmm. Certainly, you should not teach it dogmatically. Mm -hmm. And if you teach it at all, you ought to give other alternatives, like, hey, maybe the similarity is because of a common uh, designer as opposed to a common ancestor. Mm -hmm. Okay, the number of... Uh, it certainly could be Allah. I mean, I mean uh, God. Sorry, sorry. I don't know what came Yeah, from it could be uh, similarity. Let's see. Uh, I've got information on that here someplace. I have over 4,000 pictures, so it really helps if you ask your questions in the same order that I have my answers. That will right, speed things right. up. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, actually, I actually agree with you. I believe uh, Answers in Genesis is, mm -hmm. uh, is that right? Yes, good friend of mine. And uh, I believe it was on his website um, that uh, he gave the suggestion 
uh, that when a teacher presents the idea that the universe is millions or billions or kajillions or whatever they're up to these days, um, old, uh, that the response is, how do you know, were you there? I have actually gotten that response from several uh, students of mine in the non-majors biology course I teach when I ask them, do they have any questions? Uh, the response is, how do we, I know, was I there? Well, the answer is, I wasn't. So all I really know is that the universe is um, at least 32 years old. I was there for that portion of it. Uh, the rest of it is complete speculation. I was not there for, oh, the Civil War, the Revolutionary War. Uh, all we have is indirect evidence for things like that, but we don't have direct demonstration that any things like this happened. Uh, so I'll just say that uh, I definitely know it's older than 32 and leave it at that. Thanks. All right, very good. Uh, and I can testify it's at least 49. Oh. Oh. I think the type of evidence we have for the Civil War is vastly superior to the type of evidence we have for evolution. Okay? Oh. We have no evidence of evolution happening in the present. We have no, ev no proof of it happening in the past. Uh, it's something people believe in. And that's a religious worldview, and it should not be taught at taxpayer expense. Uh, I thought the question was leading to uh, evidences that the, for the age of the universe. Okay. Typically, the most common uh, given are, at least for the age of the Earth, are radiometric dating methods, be it carbon dating, potassium argon, rubidium strontium, lead 208, whatever. It uh, doesn't matter. They're all based on the same assumptions. We cover that in our video number seven in great detail. Uh, living mollusk shells, for instance, were carbon dated at 2,300 years old. Obviously, they're not 2,300 years old. They're still alive. Freshly killed seal, carbon dated 1,300 years old. They had just killed it. Okay, it's not 1,300 years old. Shells from living snails, carbon dated 27,000 years old. I mentioned this earlier. One part of a mammoth is 29,000. Another part's 44,000. Baby Dima was dated at 40,000. Another part's 26,000. And the wood next to it is 9,000. If you get the Geological Survey Professional Paper 862, you will find a uh, rather interesting reading, kind of tough to wade through, but I've got the paper at home. Here it says sample number 454 is 17,000 years old. Sample 455 is 24,000 years old. But if you read, it says this is the same sample as 454. Interesting. Sample number 299 is less than 20,000 years old. Sample L137X is greater than 28,000, and yet it's the same sample as 299. You go through and you wade through this and you find out they simply do not know, okay? Um, we could talk a long time about carbon dating. The other one commonly used is uh, the idea that the universe is billions of years old because of the stars, you know, being so-called billions of light years away. The stars may indeed be billions of light years away. I would never argue that they're not, but I certainly would argue that we do not know that the speed of light has been a constant. I also would argue we cannot prove the distance to the stars. They probably are billions of light years away, but we, we can't measure beyond about 100 light years. And you don't know, we don't know what light is, okay? Um, at Harvard University in 1999, they slowed light down to 38 miles an hour. The next year, they slowed it down to one mile an hour. And the next year, they brought it to a full stop. The speed of light was brought to zero, done at Harvard University and Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and also done at Cambridge. At Princeton University, they speeded light up to 300 times the speed of light. Um, speed of light has decreased rapidly in the observable time span. Here's a chart showing the decline of the speed of light. Uh, we could talk a long time about that. Here's a couple of quick quotes here. The speed of light was apparently exceeded by a factor of as much as 100 in two published experiments. 